What's poppin' T Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with my All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 12, Episode 10 review. Want to remind you guys that this Friday, April 8th at 6 p.m. Central Time, I will be interviewing Love and Marriage DC reality star Ashley Silva. Can't wait for you guys to see our interview. Make sure you mark it on your calendar. Once again, April 8th, Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time. I'll be interviewing Ashley Silva from Love and Marriage DC. Okay, now let's get on with the show. So on tonight's episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, we start off with Margaret planning a Hungarian party for her mother to celebrate her heritage. We learned that Marge Sr. was born in Hungary and in 1956 when she was around 10 or 11 years old the Hungarian Revolution happened and she and her family had to flee from the communists to the United States and they actually landed in the United States on Christmas Eve and you know they were immigrants they didn't speak the language it, it was very hard for them to, you know, just pick up and leave their homeland to come to some place that's new and foreign. But, you know, they made it and we see where Marge Sr. ended up now. And I think that this was a really nice way for her to tribute her mother and her turning 75 years old. It was really sweet. Um, when it comes to the guest list, however, Teresa is not invited because she, Marge, uh, Margaret doesn't want the drama, you know, even though Marge Sr. does like Teresa and vice versa, she just didn't want the drama there at her party. And I don't blame her, like, because this is important. This is my mother. I don't want to be arguing on camera at my mama's party. So we then see Teresa at her house packing up her pantry because they're about to move literally within like a week or so at this point. And she's going to give a lot of the stuff away to Dolores so Dolores can give it to a woman's shelter, which will help these, you know, women in need out, which was very, very uh, nice for Teresa to do. Dolores then comes by to pick everything up and they're talking and she conveys that she wants to go on a vacation. Now, you know, this is just the way for them to break the ice about the group trip. So obviously Dolores is the one that's going to plan the group trip with production. So Teresa says uh, that, you know, she's down for it. They then get to talking about Margaret and she asks, Dolores did she receive an invite to Marge Senior's party and she was like yeah she was like well obviously I wasn't invited she was like she doesn't care about not being invited and she feels like Marge is toxic and I was like well ain't that the pot calling the kettle black <laughs> Teresa can't call nobody toxic like she is the definition of toxicity so then we see Tiki and Chico Stick and their daughter Tegan visit Joe and Melissa at their little rental house. Um, and Tiki says that he asked Teresa at the softball game, was she mad at him? And she, we saw the footage. She was like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how you going to go off on his wife and berate her at her event and cause a scene? But you didn't have that same energy for her husband. First of all, she knew she wasn't going to give that energy to Tiki because he's a black man. And she would have known black Twitter would have went after her even though we don't even like him. And then because Teresa knows that she's full of shit.com. And she knows that picking on Chico Stick is way much easier to do. So... Their daughter, Tegan, we find out, has a tutor to prepare her for kindergarten. I'm like, what kind of shit is this? <laughs> what day and age did, do we live in that a kid needs a tutor to prepare them to go to kindergarten? That's what you go to pre-K for. Like, what is going on? Like, huh? So we also learned that the look girl is apparently not social and chico stick is worried about her and i'm like well judging by the look footage that we saw her she does seem like you know she's shy and 
you know, sticks by her mama. I'm like, maybe if y'all got out the house and made her play with other kids, she'd be more social. Like, the fuck is going on? The little girl did act a little weird, but I'm like, that's just you making her get out there and play with other children. But I'm like, a tutor to prepare her for kindergarten? All right, girl. What are you doing with your time? Did you can tutor her and get her prepared? Like, these new age mamas, child... So then Teresa get to talking about Antonia not wanting to do cheerleading and how she's so worried about her. And I'm like, Melissa, stop trying to make fetch a thing. Like, stop trying to make Antonia your storyline for this season because you don't have nothing to talk about. Like, just stop it. I would rather for you just to be on here and just be the messy bitch than sitting up here acting like you so worried about this little girl not flipping and doing high kicks and splits. Like, it's not that deep, darling. It's really not. Like, Melissa needs to really find a storyline at this point. Like, focus on Envy. I don't know. Start back singing again. Focus on the other little two kids, the, the, them little badass little boys of y'all. How about your storyline could have been focusing on your move? I understand that's part of Teresa's story, but it's still a part of y'all's story because y'all building a whole house. Maybe show us the whole process of you, you know, renovating this house and all of this stuff because that this Antonia storyline is so stupid. So, Jackie goes for ice cream with her kids. Remember, her therapist has suggested that, you know, she try ice cream because she hasn't had it in 20 years, which is crazy to me um, because I love me some ice cream, y'all. I love ice cream. I couldn't imagine going 20 years without it. But, you know, she has an eating disorder and she has herself on a strict regimen diet where she only allows herself to have so many calories a day and if you pay attention throughout the years with Jackie being on the show she eats a lot of vegetables and fruit she doesn't eat anything that's really high in calories or anything like that so we see her with the kids and she has the ice cream but she, I noticed that she only had like a few scoops which was still like a, a, a milestone for her and it was still huge and I'm happy that she actually was able to do it. The kids seemed to really enjoy you know spending that time with her and her being loose and carefree for once because you can tell like they've never and she've even admitted like they she's never had that experience with them so i know that they were actually happy and excited and probably proud of her you know what i'm saying it was a really good thing to see her make that step so antonia calls melissa out when they go to see antonia's trainer for her knee and she was like, mom, like you stop, you, you make it seem like I'm depressed or something like that. And she was like, well, I thought that, you know, maybe because when I was your age, I got depressed and da, 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 da. I'm so happy. Antonio was looking at her like, girl, stop. Like you are really doing the most with this, like have several, but Antonia does admit that changing schools mid high school was stressful. And I mean, that would be stressful for anybody i remember my daddy wanted me to switch high schools um when i was a sophomore and i was like absolutely not like i was gonna leave all my friends everybody i knew and i was like i'm not going to no new school absolutely not so i understood her on that one so we then see Jackie go to therapy and they talk about you know her eating the ice cream and she says you know i only took a few you know scoops or whatever but you know she was proud of herself but she said throughout the day she kept on thinking about eating that ice cream and how she wanted to count the calories and how she wanted to compensate missing a meal to make up for those calories that she ate but a part of her deal with her therapist is that she cannot compensate with skipping a meal she has to eat what she would normally eat plus add that on and how that was really hard for her and it is more of a mental thing than anything it's much like anxiety i feel like where it's all in your head and it seems so real in the moment that you can't differentiate you know what's real and what's fake so she says that evan wants to help her but she's not really ready for him to see her 
in that way but he also pointed out to her like i see everything because she made a statement that she said to him like it's a lot of stuff that i do that you're not privy of and he was like i see everything like that man knows what her ass be over there doing i'm pretty sure she probably makes herself throw up probably be taking enemas and all types of shit or whatever so i feel like evan though needs to be more firmer with her moving forward um because he has let her slide for what 15 years since they've been together on a lot of stuff he hasn't really pressed her about it but i think he needs to keep his foot on her damn neck about this shit because they have children like and she wants to be around to be a grandmother one day she gonna have to get this shit together so um she admits also that last season she dropped a few pounds, which was a lot for her because she's already frail after dealing with the whole thing with Teresa saying that Evan was cheating on her. And I think that people need to recognize that, especially people like Teresa that like to start stuff with people for no damn reason, how that can affect people. Because it's obvious that to, uh, Jackie is very insecure when it comes to her relationship and her marriage. And she deems being skinny as being desirable. So she already fears like if I gain weight, will he still want me? And you know she probably deals with the thoughts of will he find somebody better looking or more skinnier or more pretty. So that shit and now thinking back on it, I didn't even think about her eating disorder last season when all of that was going on. But it makes sense now why she was so frazzled. And it's because, you know, she's going through all of this stuff with her body and her image and all of this stuff. And probably feeling like she's not good enough and all of these thoughts. And you can't be fucking with people like that when they're in that type of mental headspace. Um, like Jackie is with her eating disorder. So I felt really bad for her in that moment. And Teresa ought to really be ashamed of that. So the therapist suggests, you know, this week that she planned on eating pizza with the children. And that was, that was, that scared the shit out of her to think about eating some pizza. And that was like, it's like, so um, it's <clears throat> fascinating to see somebody that scared about eating. And like she said, like she wishes she could be one of those people that could just eat freely and not worry, but she's not set up that way. So, um, the doctor then was like, okay, well, how about we just focus on <clears throat> you adding other certain things to your uh, daily plan, but you cannot take a meal away. So Jackie says, okay, she's going to do that, but you can tell this is really hard for her. But I am happy to say that reports came out last week that Jackie is now in a safe place with her health. You can actually tell physically that she's gained maybe about five to ten pounds. I want to say about maybe five to seven pounds. She looks a little meatier, but not that much. But her arms have filled out and she looks really good. And I'm happy to see that she's in a safe zone health wise. And I pray that she's able to keep it up because this has really been something scary to see somebody go through something like that so it's the day of marge senior's hungarian party and bill has decided to rejoin the group now sis is done being mad so we then cut to Teresa, melania and gia at the house reminiscing about all the moments that they've had in the house and Teresa and Melania get choked up thinking about, you know, all the times that they spent with their father there and all of the stuff with their grandparents. And it was actually, you know, heart wrenching to see because we've been in this family's life since these little girls were itty bitty. You know what I'm saying? And we saw them move into this house and her have the fourth daughter and Gia being a little bitty girl and Melania being a toddler and all of this stuff. So it was very nostalgic watching them go down memory lane. I just pray that Teresa's making the right decision with moving in with Louis so fast. Like, you got your girls around this man after only a year you moving your girls in a house with this man. Like, I like I said, I just ain't, I wasn't brought up that way to just be bringing anybody around my kids. And especially moving so fast that you're all about to integrate households and you after a year you really don't know nobody from adam hell even longer than that you sometimes never really truly know a person so 
I just pray for Teresa because, you know, when it comes to men, Teresa really does put men on a pedestal where they can do no fucking wrong. And it's it's scary. So we then switch to the party and we find out that the venue that Mar Margaret is having the Hungarian party for her mom is actually the same place that the christening scene happened on Joe and Melissa's first season. Uh, Marge and Margaret looked so cute. I love their outfits. They had on matching outfits, but different styles, but they used the same fabric and it was just so cute. Margaret had on a jumpsuit that just fit her curves perfectly. And Marge Singer had a fitted suit. They looked so cute. Um, then all the other housewives arrive and Chico Stick needs to stand up straight. Her posture is horrible. I didn't care for Melissa's outfit. It looked like some shit she got from Tar J and said, I'm just going to throw this shit on. Dolores looked cute for the most part. It wasn't nothing I was like fascinated over. And then here come, no, actually Jackie's outfit was cute. It was really cute. You know, that was the dress of the summer um this past summer was that style of dress i actually featured that same dress in my movie paper heart if you have not seen it it's available right now on tubi for free um and then jennifer and bill arrive and jennifer arrives in this god-awful dress that looked like something molly ringwall designed in pretty and pink she looked a mess that dress was ugly as hell so Bill hugs Margaret, uh, her husband's Joe, and they, you know, talk, and then he hugs Frank, and um, Frank says in his confessional that Joe Gorga wants an apology from Bill, and feels like Bill owes him an apology, but he personally doesn't feel like Bill owes Joe Gorga an apology. And I noticed that Frank said a lot of shit in his confessional that he don't really say to these men. I need for Frank big ass to stop being a pussy and say this shit to their faces. So Joe Gorga comes over to speak to Bill and he explains that he expected a phone call from Bill after Jennifer kicked him out because he like it was embarrassing and degrading. And he just felt like, you know, even though their wives went through that, it should have been a situation where he called him and was like, yo, I know our wives is going through this, but ain't no hard feelings. Sorry about everything. I'm going to, you know, rectify this and I'm going to get at you later. Which I agreed with, you know, that it was nothing to make that phone call. But as you can see, Bill is not a confrontational person. So he probably didn't even know how to address the situation. Bill, however, agrees. But they both say that they were hurt by the other. And I, I agree. I could tell that Bill was hurt by being singled out, you know, based on the stuff that happened with Jennifer. But in the end, they all make up and decide, you know, the women's stuff is the women's stuff. We don't do that over here. You know, we the cool people. So Dolores and this vacation comes up between the guys and the women. She says that she wants to take everyone to Nashville. The girls then stand around and talk and Marge and Chico stick tell the other ladies how Teresa made that comment about Mar Margaret having a big ass or whatever and it would have looked better in her athletic I mean her exercise wear you know body shaming her or whatever um I mean you know I talk about people all day every day so I just would have gave the shit back because Teresa in varicose veins like <laughs> and that botched orange skin giving me Donald Trump girl Teresa is such an easy read like uh, your Eddie Munster hairline like girl sit down sit down Wah, ha, ha, ha. I would have hit her with the vampire. Wah, ha, ha, ha. Like it's an easy read. I would have got her ass to write the fuck back. So um Chico Stick then brings up that, you know, Teresa mad at her, but not mad at her husband, and she just don't understand like the contradiction of it all. I'm like, Teresa don't even understand. Teresa don't Teresa is just a walking dingbat. She don't know whether she's going left or right. Dolores then states to them that, you know, Teresa says that she don't fight with men. And they was like, what the fuck that man? She was like, look, I'm just telling you what the lady said. Don't take it out on me. Uh, 
Then everybody sits down to eat. Jackie struggles with eating and she's watching all the other ladies, specifically Jennifer, just being able to eat and enjoy her food. And she just wishes that she was able to do the same. And, you know, Margaret does a really nice speech to her mom and everybody just dances and has a really good time. And the episode goes off now on next week's episode is the episode we've been waiting for where Teresa acts an ass and shoves various plates and forks and knives and glasses uh, across the table on Margaret I cannot wait to see this foolishness because I don't understand how Margaret didn't leap across that table and whoop Teresa's ass but overall, tonight's episode was like a, it was cool. It was pretty much like a filler episode to me. So overall, I'll give tonight's episode a C plus. You know, it was cute for what it was. But next week's episode is going to get right back to the drama. And I am so excited. Once again, you guys, make sure you tune in this Friday to my interview with Love and Marriage DC star Ashley Silva. I ask all the important questions. So get ready to sip this tea Yes, ma'am, it is hot and honey filled. I love you guys. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell button. I love you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.